Hello everybody, today we present in this, in continuing with our attempt to create integrated clinical videos on YouTube. Today we present the case with me and Tushar together we look at creating a video of a very important case for undergraduates and postgraduates and we'll try to look at the integrated picture where we look at both the radiological and the clinical aspects of a disease. To understand this disease I'll start with the x-ray findings of this patient. This is a five-year-old child who presented with multiple spontaneous pathological fractures and the x-ray shows the outstanding finding in this x-ray is reduced bone density. Can you see the generalized re reduction in bone density and the outstanding fa feature that you can appreciate here is deformity. You can see the diaphysis of the tibia and the femur are deformed. So the first keyword here is deformity and when we take a closer look you can see multiple fractures in the bones which are where are they located diaphyseal so the second word that is very important for us is diaphyseal location look at the callus formation in this x-ray and you don't appreciate it here so in different stages of healing so the key words that we need to remember here are a preschool child you have osteoporotic bones with generalized reduction in bone density with deformity, diaphyseal fractures with different stages of healing. What do you think we are talking about? Osteogenesis imperfecta. So osteogenesis imperfecta is a disease where the bones are brittle with the child having multiple fractures and the key thing to understand is it is further divided by into types by silence classification. The most common variety that we see is the silence type 1 which is the milder form. Salines type 2 is the fatal form, so because this is a preschool child, we don't think this is type 2. And type 3, 4 would be associated with kyphoscoliosis. We don't have the x-ray of the spine to comment on that. So now I'll invite Dr. Tushar to add clinical and the treatment aspects to this disease. So as we all know that uh, this is a preschool child and the x-rays are strongly suggestive of osteogenesis imperfecta. There are a couple of very important associations in this particular case and this is as of now a type 1 according to silence classification. We will be now taking in this integrated session the clinical aspects. If you take a look at the clinical aspects, the first thing that one needs to focus upon is the delayed dentition. <coughs> We should not forget that imperfecta, osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease is precisely due to type 1 collagen deficiency and certainly it is present in our teeth as well. So if it is absent in the bones, it is certainly absent in teeth as well and that is why not only it's a brittle bone disease but it's a brittle tooth disease as well and that is why the term dentinogenesis imperfecta is used and you can definitely appreciate the peg shaped tooth, the density is not normal, there is loss of the enamel. Definitely there is one more image that is worth a watch classic. and that is so classic of this condition that is blue sclera. Sclera also has type 1 collagen in abundance. Definitely if type 1 collagen is not there, type 1 collagen is deficient and sclera is also thinned out. Now one must try to understand that it is due to the thinning of the sclera that the, phy that the uveal vasculature which is situated behind the sclera that starts throwing its luster and that is basic the the basically the reason for blue sclera. Sclera as such is not blue, it is the uveal vasculature which is showing its luster. That is an, again a very important point. These two associations, they make it classical as a whole in unison that we are talking about osteogenesis imperfecta. As so I'll, I'll request <coughs> to, to summarize that we have multiple fractures, diaphyseal, various stages of healing. Yes, deformities. deformities. Dentigerous is imperfecta. Blue sclera. Blue sclera. Blue sclera. So these are the key things that we look for in a patient with suspected osteogenesis. Osteogenesis imperfecta. Okay. Now uh, when we go on to the next aspect, that will be the management part. In that management part, the, the the image right now in front of you is, it's it's certainly an intramedullary nail. It's not a normal nail. I can make you understand in the way that if we put a normal nail in a normal child, certainly after a couple of years, the child will grow, but the nail won't. So definitely what you have to understand is that with passage of time, the nail has to grow as well. And how an, the nail will grow? If you will put a nail, which is like an umbrella, collapsible, expandable nail, which in orthopedics is called telescopy nail. You understand telescope? Tube within a tube. 
So there is this nail which has a tube within a tube. After a couple of years, the child comes back to us, we remove the flange and we expand the nail. Technically, these are called as Bailey and Dubois rods. I repeat, Bailey and Dubois rods. Telescoping nail is a generalized term, Bailey and Dubois is a specific term. Whenever there are pathological fractures, as sir mentioned, diaphyseal fractures, we use these intramedullary nails for fixation, which are collapsible and expandable. But there are certain cases, as sir mentioned, that one D was diaphyseal, another D is deformity. So if a deformity comes to us, it becomes very difficult to negotiate a nail through and through. First, we need to realign the bone and then we can put on a nail. So to realign the bone, first we have to cut the bone at different levels. Cutting a bone, tomi, cutting, osteo, bone. So we have to perform a osteotomy first. The osteotomy that we do here, that is a realignment osteotomy that has to be done at multiple levels. After you cut the bone, you align the bone and then you put in a nail. The technical term for this osteotomy is Sofield Miller surgery. Sofield Miller osteotomy. So to summarize, management of a pathological fracture, Bailey and Dubois rods, management of a deformity, Sofield Miller osteotomy. And there is one term. This osteotomy is popularly known as Sikh Kebab operation uh, because yeah, I was just about to say it looks like <laughs> so practically you have a nail and you are just putting the you're just peeling the bone on that. So that is why it has given that fancy name as well. So uh, to summarize the treatment for the fracture only disease is different from the deformity. Yes, absolutely. And one more thing, uh, b of course, uh, surgical management is has to be done and uh, it has to be done under the cover of bisphosphonates. The drug of choice uh, uh, for this particular condition as they retard the further process of fractures. Now, if we look at another, f yeah, a very important thing to remember, whenever we look at a child with multiple fractures, we think of osteogenesis imperfecta as the main diagnosis because we had diaphyseal fractures with deformity. but. Sometimes you may have a child with multiple fractures, but the fractures could be at the metaphysis or the metaphyseal corner. In this patient, you see metaphyseal corner fractures. What do you think is the differential diagnosis to remember? Battered baby. This is how on x-ray we differentiate battered baby syndrome from osteogenesis imperfecta. <coughs> I hope you enjoyed this integrated activity that we created on DAMS. We it is our endeavor to create more such educational videos on the damn silly channel of, of YouTube. We would be happy if you subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you very much.